Welcome friends, welcome to the end time hour on Eternal Radio. Friends, the age old battle for the souls of humanity is raging. I believe it. I don't know if you feel this or not, friends, but I feel it in my spirit. I feel that the battle is raging as never before. I perceive, friends, that time is short. Time is short and the devil knows it because Satan, the devil, and his demonic forces know the appointed time of their torment. They have an idea of the time they have left. Remember how when Jesus sailed to the country of the Gadarenes, Jesus stepped out on to the land and instantly the powers of hell felt his presence. Imagine it. Imagine what the spirit realm saw as Jesus arrived on that shore. Jesus' disciples and those around him only saw Jesus, the physical, earthly looking man made of flesh. He just looked like one of them. But strip the physical world away and Jesus, who is the very essence of God himself, was arrayed in glorious and impenetrable light. He was clothed as with the sun and a burning sword proceeded out of his mouth. His eyes were like the eyes of fire and with him judgment came. With him authority over all the kingdom of darkness, authority over the demonic foot soldiers and authority over their commander in chief, the devil. Oh, friends, I often wonder what that encounter looked like. But that demon possessed man, upon seeing Jesus, was propelled over to him. And the demons growled, it says. They growled in a terrible sounding voice and shouted at the top of that voice. And using the man's vocal cords said, What do you want with us, son of God? Have you come here to torture us before the appointed time? You see, they knew it. They knew that Jesus was early. So they know, friends. They, along with their leader, the devil, know the appointed time is at hand and it is getting closer. And so as it gets closer, so also does the battle get more fierce. He's mad, friends. The devil is mad and he knows he's a loser. He knows he will ultimately lose out to God and be tortured in the fires of hell at the appointed time. Oh, hallelujah. So the battle is fiercer than ever before because time is short. The devil, who as Lucifer, that sublime angel, all those thousands of years ago said in his heart, I will ascend above the most high, who had the audacity to say, I will be like the most high, and then was cast down to earth by the God of heaven as a result of his arrogance. And he now wreaks havoc on this planet created by God and Satan through the sinful acts of the first humans deceived by his cunning took what was rightfully theirs and ours and the devil by deception became the God of this world, the ruler of the prince of the air, which is why the devil has control over the mainstream media and uses it as his own propaganda arm. Oh, friend, if we could have eyes to see beyond the physical, people would stop praising the movie studios. People would stop glorifying the actors and actresses who are actually only slaves to this demonic system. This adulation of these people is akin to worship. It is actually worship. Let's name it for what it is. But Hollywood and the mainstream media is imploding. As the battle rages heavy and the sons and daughters of the light rise upon the earth, appointed for this time, and some being used powerful in this battle to shame the wise, and some being used in this battle that even the church cannot recognise them because these people of prominence don't fit in with that worldview, which by the way, that worldview has been implanted into them by the mainstream media, but also by a religious, pharisaical spirit too, which is rampant today. Friends, people today and many Christians are a product of the mainstream media, completely hoodwinked by the evil and satanic people at the top who are on a 
power trip. Friends, these people at the top who control these massive corporations, especially the mainstream media, Hollywood and the social media platforms, have given themselves over to the God of this world. They have bowed down to Satan and that's how power has fallen into their laps. It's the only way to gain global control over the masses, to gain control over the world. Eternal Radio. Sounds to energize your faith. We're closer now than ever. This pain won't last forever. Satan thrown to earth by God, immediately went to work to gain global control. He couldn't do it himself. He couldn't do it without first gaining control over those who God had given the earth over to, to subdue it and to have dominion over everything in it. Satan had to deceive those who God gave it to, the first humans. And tragically, friends, and tragically, sin entered the world through Adam and Eve and their DNA their blood was tainted with sin. Sin entered the world and Satan took what was given to them on that fateful day. Satan was given the authority to take over. Now, fast forward to Christ, the second Adam. Jesus, taken into the desert, is subjected to the devil, as were Adam and Eve. Satan tries it again. Satan knows this is make or break. If he loses this, then he loses the world. Can you imagine it, friends? Satan tempts Christ by saying that he will give him everything. All the kingdoms of this world he will give to Jesus if only he would bow down and worship him. But Jesus immediately rebuked the devil and said, away from me, Satan. Jesus declared, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Hallelujah. Friends, when the devil comes knocking on our door, we need to rebuke him immediately, just as Jesus did. Away from me, Satan. Hallelujah. Oh, friends, it was this year that I found myself in an immense spiritual battle. I was under attack for the work I was doing. Friends, one night I was physically struck on my side as I slept. I woke immediately to sense an evil presence in the darkness. I rebuked it and immediately went off to sleep again. Not long after that, the devil came to me during the night watches and danced in light, attempting to draw me into himself. I'd never experienced anything anything like it. All night long I fought back the darkness. The Lord God gave me a new Holy Spirit tongue and I was rebuking the devil all night long. After that friends he left and since then he's not been back. Now that's not to say I don't regularly feel the spiritual warfare and sometimes intense warfare but he's not been back in that way. He wouldn't dare. Friends, why do I tell you this? Because as you, as we seek the Lord and work for him in these last days, we will become a target for the devil. Now, don't be afraid. Don't shrink back because of that thought. Just be forewarned and then forearmed. Don't be surprised if the devil attacks you and don't immediately assume you're doing something wrong. No, because that also is a trick of the devil. It's likely you're doing something very right. Hallelujah. Now, don't make a song and dance about the devil, friends. Don't give him too much airtime and simply say, like Jesus, in in the name of Jesus, away from me, Satan. Hallelujah. And he will certainly flee away from you. So here, Satan approaches Jesus and offers him the world, but Jesus immediately refuses and rebukes him. Now, Satan has been offering this world to anyone who will take it since Adam until now. And that is what he is doing now through the likes of so many leaders, not only political, but also heads of these vast and powerful corporations like Google, Facebook, Apple and Hollywood and so on, which are all being used to control the masses and are actually actually being used to usher in the tyranny which at the appointed time will be headed by a man the Bible calls the Antichrist. 
he, of course, would have been visited by Satan, just like Satan visited Jesus, and he will have said, all this I will give to you if you will only bow down and worship me. Now, let's also realise, friends, that it is the devil that comes to tempt not only these powerful and rich elite, but he comes to all of humanity with the same temptation. I'll give you everything if only you bow to me, he says. It's all a lie, of course, and this so-called power is for a limited time only. And all those who have chosen to follow Satan, who for the most part comes disguised as an angel of light, of course he doesn't often appear as the beast that he is. No, he is the father of deception and the father of lies. But for all those who choose Satan's way will be thrown into the lake of fire that has been preserved for the devil and his demons. Oh friends, the clock is ticking. Shall we rescue the perish? Where are we on this time clock? It's difficult to tell. We in some ways are witnessing a reprieve with this current move away from globalism. But because of this reprieve, we are also seeing an incredible backlash from the elite, from the devil who is empowering the globalists, from the globalists who have sold their souls. So could the reprieve actually have sped things up? We'll have to wait and see. But I feel, friends, I feel that time is short and the war is on. Revelation 12, 12 says, the devil has come down to the earth with great anger and will bring terror with him because he knows his time is short. He knows it, friends, just like his minions knew it when Jesus, who arrived in the country of the Gadarene, and that man threw himself before Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. And Jesus cast those demons out. So then, friends, let us don the armour. Let us pick up the weapons of our warfare, because let's never forget, friends, this battle is spiritual. It's not earthly as it may appear, and the devil is prowling around like a roaring lion, just waiting to devour someone. Let it not devour us, friends. Let us clothe ourselves with Christ this very hour. And let that glorious clothing terrify the hordes of hell and send them packing in total confusion off that cliff and into the depths of the ocean. Hallelujah. Let's get the armour on, friends. Let's get it on right now and let's not delay. Eternal Radio. Sounds to energise your faith. For the battle is raging, the devil is raging, and I don't want to be sleeping. So friends, the devil is angry. Revelation 12.12 12 says that he brought terror with him when he was thrown down to the earth. And how clearly we can see this terror manifesting in our time in the end time global war on terror. Which, by the way, is by design and won't end until it has served its purpose. Terror, friends, is a powerful weapon. And we can see Satan's terror being used by the globalists for their own ends. By using this climate of fear, they enact Orwellian laws to surreptitiously undermine and supplant democracy. They use it to further control the masses through warrantless eavesdropping and mass surveillance to crack down on free speech, namely those in opposition to globalism, liberty advocacy, advocates and Christian preachers who preach the full word of God and are accused of hate. But at the same time, the actual hate preachers radicalise their members in Islamic mosques across Europe and Britain, and they are conveniently forgotten. And of course, at the end of the day, we are told it's all for our own safety and security. And mostly, the masses lap it up and breathe a sigh of relief from within the comfort of their heavily surveillanced home. Friends, we've known this for years, that a smart TV can spy on consumers, but now it's in the open. And no, it's not a conspiracy theory. British spy agencies worked with the CIA to turn televisions and smartphones into bugging devices. It has been revealed. Friends, the software known as Weeping 
talking angel can record conversations and even take photographs according to leaked intelligence documents and all this even when the television is switched off. Also, the CIA are alleged to be targeting cars that contain onboard computers linked to the internet that once in control of vehicles, they could stage assassinations and make them look like accidents. This has all come out this year, but I wrote about a scenario like this in my book, Trumpet Blast Warning. Here's what I said. Think about it. In the near future, when the totalitarian regime is fully unleashed, this technology will be used against the people to quell religious gatherings and political dissent. Imagine being forcibly locked and imprisoned within your own home or trapped inside an elevator. Or your car being disabled remotely, stopping you from travelling to or from a destination or worse, being used as a weapon to assassinate you. Imagine having a private conversation with a friend and while your cell phone innocently lies on the coffee table beside you, someone is using it to listen in to your conversation. What was once the realm of science fiction is now a terrifying reality. And all this, friends, is happening before our very eyes under the guise of safety and security. But of course, the war on terror serves other ends too, one of them being to divide and conquer the oil-rich Middle East. And also, that's why the US aided and abetted ISIS, because it saw it as a strategic asset to bring down Assad of Syria, and even ended up arming them. And not to mention the knock-on effect of ISIS operatives now flooding into Europe along with the millions of migrants, which serves to lock down Europe and Islamize it. Again, a divide and conquer strategy. So then, the devil brought terror with him to the earth and he is angry. Angry because he knows his time is short. He knows his time of torture and his end is drawing near. And we can read that in Revelation 12.12. 12. Now, 1 John 5.19 reads something very important. It says this, We know that we are children of God and that the whole world is under the control of the evil one. The devil can only use people for this global control of the planet that John writes about here. But what the first part of the verse says is really important. We are children of God. You see, the devil doesn't have control over the children of God. You see, once we have crossed over from darkness to light, from Satan's dominion to the kingdom of God, the devil no longer has control over us. We are no longer children of the devil. We are no longer doing his bidding on the earth. We are no longer a part of the system enslaved by the devil to bring his dominion on the earth. No, we are now children of God working to bring God's dominion and praying down God's kingdom on the earth as it is in heaven. And so we are living in this kind of scenario, a whole world under the control of the devil and God's people behind enemy lines. Remember, Jesus said, I am sending you out like sheep among wolves. And so we find ourselves in a war, a war far greater than all the physical wars of past, present and future put together. A spiritual war is raging for the souls of every man, woman and child on the planet and those who have stepped into the kingdom of light having been washed in the precious blood of Jesus immediately become traitors traitors of the devilish system to control the world the true disciples of Christ become the enemies of Satan the true disciples of Christ become the enemies of all those who are lost all those who are brainwashed by the system all those who arrogantly celebrate their sinful lifestyles who emulate and adulate those Hollywood and mainstream media slaves and tragically do not realise or they are too dumbed down to even care that they are not a product of their own independent thought but rather they are like parrots who mimic their cultural engineers while arrogantly strutting about their cages as though they are free. Eternal Radio sounds to energise your faith. Battle. 
Yes, friends, we're being watched, monitored, and mind controlled. And still, I, along with others, will continue to be accused and be derided as conspiracy theorists. I don't honestly know how much longer that rhetoric can continue amid the abundant evidence all around. Friends, this surveillance state is leading in one direction, global enslavement. In the future, our homes will no longer use a conventional key. Even our homes will be taken out of our own hands and be put into the hands of the technocracy. You see, first the traditional key will be replaced by a digital swipe card or key for much like has been already adopted by hotels. The next step is obvious, a chip implanted in the hand or facial recognition software, which many tech companies are developing facial recognition. And by the way, Facebook has ideas to use facial recognition to make payments. Friends, you can't make this stuff up. Let's remember what the Bible said 2,000 years ago. Revelation 13, 16, and he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no one may be able to buy or sell unless they have the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Prophesied 2,000 years ago, facial recognition, the forehead, and the chip implant or tattoo to make payments. Coincidence? No, my friends. God has warned the world and people blame God for all the evil. If the people could just heed the warnings and follow God, then evil would evaporate in a moment and the nightmare would be over. But we know, friends, this is not going to happen. And the only way this is going to end is by the brightness of Jesus coming and through us, his servants, speeding that coming upon the earth through advancing the gospel and pushing back the darkness across the planet. So getting back to what I was saying, friends, this surveillance aided by the technological age is setting a trap for us. It's fun. It's convenient. It's convenient to just wave your hand over your front door in order to unlock it. But friends, just as the cashless society is convenient but takes away our freedom and puts us in the hands of the corrupt banking system, so also does a keyless society take away our freedom. Imagine, as I said in my book, Trumpet Blast Warning, being locked outside or inside your home. Imagine you've had a prayer meeting. Imagine you've discussed some biblical passages deemed hateful or extreme by the state. Imagine your TV, while turned off, has sent back data to a surveillance centre. Imagine the thought police arriving at your door. Imagine not being able to leave because the digital lock has been overridden. Imagine law enforcement having the right to unlock your own own front door. What a violation. Imagine a hacker or a terrorist or the intelligence agencies having that ability to enter your home. I tell you friends, that reality is not too far away. It's approaching in the not too distant future and no one will be safe even in their own home. But friends, we are living in a surveillance society today. And the nightmarish future envisioned by George Orwell in his book 1984 has today become a disturbing reality. In fact, it has been superseded. Orwell was like a prophet. He wrote this in 1949. Always eyes watching you and the voice enveloping you. Asleep or awake, indoors or out of doors, in the bath or bed, no escape. Nothing was your own except the few cubic centimetres in your skull. But soon, my friends, no, not even the few cubic centimetres in a person's skull will be their own. Even that will be compromised and invaded by the elite. That's right, friends. That friendly social media platform, Facebook, is developing a mind-reading brain interface that will one day let you communicate using only your mind. And of course, Google has predicted that a Google implant will put the web in your head by the year 2020. But other 
companies are racing ahead with the technology too. Speaking at Lisbon's Web Summit, Brian Johnson, the founder of Kernel, a startup researching the possibilities of microchips being inserted in the brain, said unlocking the true potential of the mind is the single greatest thing humanity can achieve and hopes to evolve the brain to offer superhuman abilities. Johnson continued, for example, could I have a perfect memory? Could I delete my memories? Could I increase my rate of learning? Could I have brain to brain communication? But right now, friends, Facebook is spearheading virtual reality. Zuckerberg said this will help us mix the physical and digital in new ways and make reality better. Friends, I don't think so. Make reality better. No, friends, this is what the elite are wanting to achieve. They are wanting everyone to live in some kind of virtual world so they can get on and do what they want to do, control the real world, while its people are living in a complete entertainment simulation. Friends, people are supposed to be going down to the beach and looking at the sea. People are supposed to be looking at a sunrise or looking at a sunset or walking through the woods and picking the flowers. Friends, people are supposed to be going through the fields. People are supposed to be living life and going outside. People are supposed to be interacting with other people in communities. Friends, people are supposed to be living with other people. People are supposed to be enjoying God's creation, not looking at some kind of a simulation and merging that simulation with reality as though that simulation is somehow on a par. Do you see what they're trying to do, friends? They are trying to replace, they are trying to replace God with their own technology, where the technology becomes God itself, where technology becomes the people's reality, except that is for the elite who are outside of that and are controlling the people. A top technology company making virtual reality products is already planning for a time when actual life and virtual reality are indistinguishable. Chip maker company AMD, which runs PlayStation 4 and Xbox One consoles, is banking on virtual reality taking over the world. AMD's corporate vice president, Roy Taylor, said, To get to photorealism is the next big step. To get to full presence is where we need to get afterwards, when actual life will be indistinguishable from virtual reality. Friends, researchers have already used virtual reality to make people feel like they are having an out-of-body experience. Can you see where this is heading? Real people losing themselves in a virtual world where they have religious experiences and not to mention every other fantasy and desire attended to while being spellbound in that place. Virtual reality will certainly aid the one world religion of the Antichrist and his false prophet. And VR this time around is not a passing fad. The corporations are making sure of that. Virtual reality headset sales reached one billion last year. So friends, this is where social media is leading humanity. And for the most part, it's already virtual, isn't it? It's not social media, it's anti-social media. It's always the opposite of what is really intended by the elite. You see, the controllers are out to deceive the masses. It's anti-social media, and it's separating families, friends, and whole communities who cannot live for one minute without checking that they've got a like on their latest post. But friends, what is creepy is that it was made that way. Yes, friends, one of the founding members of Facebook came out this week saying that Facebook is exploiting a vulnerability in human psychology. Sean Parker, the former president of Facebook, who joined Mark Zuckerberg's company in its first months, said the company's founders intentionally built to the site to consume as much human attention as possible and also said the ability to like or comment on a post sends users a little dopamine hit to encourage them to post again. Parker said it literally changes your relationship with society, with each other. And he also said, God only knows what this is doing to our children's brains. The inventors, creators understood this consciously and we did it anyway, Parker said. 
Friends, I don't know about what you think, but isn't that evil? Isn't that abuse? But no one will say a word about that kind of brainwashing. But parents who want to bring their children up in a Christian home are accused of brainwashing and will actually have their children taken away from them. Now, according to studies, Facebook and internet addiction have been found to show up in brain scans in a similar way to drug addiction. Instagram, which is also owned by Facebook, was found to have the worst impact on young people's self-esteem, negatively impacting people's body image, sleep, and a fear of missing out. Can you see how the system is controlling the masses? Controlling them through these seemingly innocuous so-called social media platforms, or sucking in our young through mindless computer games often filled with violence and war, locking children and adults down, brainwashing and confusing them, them, swaying them and conditioning them to accept things that otherwise they would have never contemplated. Like the teenage girl who was pressured on social media to change her sex or the young man who goes out and shoots people dead because that's what he's been playing all day long, all week long. Friends, Facebook even revealed that it experimented in order to control the emotions of its users. Lawyers, internet activists and politicians said that the mass experiment in emotional manipulation was scandalous, spooky and disturbing. So then friends, I have said it before and I'll say it again. If we, as people of the cross, as the soldiers in this battle for humanity, are to stand up against the evil that is rising in our day, if we are to stand strong against that devil who has come down to the earth and unleashed his terror because his time is short, if we are to stand up against all that is evil, then we must put on Christ and make absolutely no provision for the flesh. We must don the armour and we must stand against all that is coming against us in this world. And we must stand tall, shoulder to shoulder with our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. And friends, as we go through the earth, we will see the victory in Jesus' mighty name. We will bring people out of darkness. We will bring people that are entrapped in this mindless confusion that has been brought here through the devil and is being administered through the global elite and the mainstream media, its mouthpiece. Hallelujah. Music for your life with Eternal Radio. Jesus said, the devil, the prince of this world, is coming, but he has no hold over me. He has absolutely no power over me at all. John 14, 30. Friends, when Jesus walked the earth as a man, not for one moment did the devil ever have any rule or any power over him. Jesus had no chink in his armour. There was no gap in which the devil could whisper a thought or a single word he could say that would cause Jesus to sway. Never, not one day or one minute or even a second did the devil have the minutest of victories over Jesus our Lord. Even when Jesus was so fiercely tested in the desert and also experienced intense spiritual warfare in the garden before his crucifixion, the devil had absolutely no power over him at all. Friends, friends, that is what we need. That is what we need. That is what we must have every day. No chink in our armour. No whispering words of discouragement, no lies passing through our minds, no feelings of heaviness, depression or hopelessness or terror, no evil thoughts or lusts of the flesh. The devil is coming. Friends, in fact, we know he is already here. And Revelation 12.12 12 says that he has come down and he is angry and he is angry for one reason, because his time is short. Oh, hallelujah, friends. You also know what that means, don't you? If Satan's time is coming to an end, that also means the time of the renewal of all things is at hand too. The new earth and the new heaven, along with our new resurrected bodies, are coming soon, and we will forever be with 
our Lord. Wow, hallelujah. Can you wait, friends? I can't. But for now, here we are on the earth and the battle is raging and we must keep our wits about us. So then, no chink in the armour so that when that old devil comes knocking on our door, he has no power. And we simply continue with the task at hand, glorifying God and fulfilling all that he has called us to do. So then, how do we do it? How do we do that, friends? How do we end up with no chink in our armour? It's simple, friends. It's really simple and it's also very beautiful too. We clothe ourselves. We clothe ourselves with Christ Jesus himself. Oh, hallelujah. Romans 13, 11 to 12 says, and do this, understanding the present time. The hour has already come for you to wake up from your slumber because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is nearly over, the day is almost here, so let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armour of light. And then verse 14 says, clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the flesh. So then, friends, let us do that, along with the psalmist who also writes in chapter 143, I flee unto thee to hide me. I have covered myself with thee. Oh, hallelujah. And I love it, friends, how it puts it in Job 29. I put on righteousness as my clothing. Justice was my robe and my turban. Jesus, my friends, is the armour. Jesus is the garment of righteousness. That's why we are more than conquerors, because Jesus has already done it for us. All we need to do is to spend time in his glorious presence, worshipping and praying without ceasing. And as we do this, friends, as we do, we will find ourselves clothed from on high, clothed in Jesus' most glorious presence. And no devil of hell or even Satan himself will be able to get near our tent. Oh, friends, they wouldn't dare for fear that that torment might start before the appointed time. Oh, hallelujah, friends, shall we pray? Oh, hallelujah, Jesus, we worship you and we glorify your wonderful name. Father God, I pray right now for all of us, Lord, everyone that is listening to this broadcast. Father, that they would know your special presence coming to them right now that they would know that clothing power of your righteousness father god that they would know your power right now in this very moment that they would experience that clothing power of jesus christ coming upon them right now oh hallelujah hallelujah friend i see someone sitting there and they're listening to this broadcast right now and I see you and I'm and I see you that you need to open the door of your heart a little bit wider Jesus is saying open it a bit wider and I'm coming right in I'm coming right in and I will clothe you I will clothe you from on high I will clothe you with myself oh hallelujah hallelujah father God we thank you for your presence we thank you Lord that you clothe us with your power that you clothe us with yourself Lord and that you protect us in the storm and that no matter what happens we can stay safe and secure in God bless you, friends. God bless you. And I'll be back with you again next week. The views expressed in this production may not necessarily be those of Eternal Radio. Eternal Radio. The preceding program was made possible by kind donations from the listeners to Eternal Radio. 
for which we are very grateful. It takes a great deal of time and resources to prepare, produce, record, and broadcast our programs to listeners in over 60 countries around the world. Our potential audience is much larger, and Eternal Radio can now be heard all around the world, online, on tablet, on smartphone, and on TV. If you would like to help us continue broadcasting sounds to energize your faith, together with the message of God's love for all mankind around the world, please prayerfully consider making a donation. From your mobile phone, simply text ELCM02, followed by your donation preference of £3, £5 or £10 to 70070. Thank you for listening.